The Chris, Fe- the Chris Phillips Friday Late Show. It's a new way to spend the night out whilst at home on Second City Radio. How much do you miss all of that, guys and girls out there? Well, she's on the phone now. Suzanne, welcome to Second City Radio. Oh, Chris, thank you very much. Do you know what? I haven't heard that music for a while. It it takes me back, and it's really sad that it's not on anymore. I know. Well, I heard that at five o'clock. I heard that intro because I was watching you at five o'clock tonight while I was eating my my jam butties. I was watching (laughs) it. What episode were you watching It was. It was an episode with Mickey Webb. Um, who'd gone round to uh, some woman's house who um, somebody had paid to have a, a husband killed, and he right. slept with her, and you were in it, and you were pottering around in the back. You're, you're, you're actually in so many episodes, sometimes bit parts, other times taking lead roles, of course. I was watching you with Don Beach, of course, where he asked yeah. you for a, a return and a favour that you'd done. But we'll come to the bill. We've got lots to talk about there in a bit, but let's go back first. First of all, how are you? Is everything good in your world? Yeah, everything's good. I'm really happy you've asked me to do this. I know a couple of my colleagues have already done this. I know Ben Payton was here last week, is that he right? Was. Sunday, and, um, also, Sunday. Yeah. Um, uh, Burnside was in as well, I believe. Yes, Chris Allison was on this... Well, if you go back one week, exactly now he was on the radio. He was on the, sh- the show tonight, was he? So, yeah, um, do you know what? I never ever worked with Chris. Um, I've been in his company a couple of times, but yeah. never ever met him. He's a character, I... Well, he's, you know, it's kind of what I said at the moment in this interview. There's certain people, characters that you'll always remember. Uh, yeah. and just before we get into chat to you, I, I will at this point, because I wanted to do it at this point, uh, I want to say how sad I am of the news today that uh, EastEnders actor Leslie Grantham uh, has passed away at the age of 71, of course. Somebody else uh, oh. who will remember Dirty Den, of course, from EastEnders, um, sadly passing away at the age of 71. Uh, see, that's another character there, Suzanne, who, who you'll always remember, Dirty Den. Absolutely. I mean, I grew up watching EastEnders. I'm really sorry to hear that. You know, I haven't seen the news today. It's been a really busy day. I've been here, there and everywhere. So I didn't realise that that was the case. I know um, Graham Cole uh, was quite close to Leslie Grantham. Graham Cole obviously played um, Tony um, on on the bill. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, I think he'll be rather upset to hear that news. So, yeah, sorry about that. I, I didn't realise that was the case. Well, listen, Chick, let's go back before the bill. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, there's lots to talk about. I've had a bit of a recce through uh, some of the stuff, of course. I know where to find it, of course. Even if it's, <laughs> some of it is X-rated. But we won't talk about the X-rated <laughs> stuff. We'll leave, we'll leave that for another show. Uh, what, what, what made you decide? What made you decide and what age did you decide to become an actor? Well, I'd always wanted to be an actor, even when I was a little kid. Um, and when, you know, when people, you're growing up and people say to you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I'd say, oh, I want to be an actress. And um, all my family, they're quite down to earth people. Yeah. And they would all say, "Oh, you know, that's that's nice to have as a dream, but you need a proper job, sort of attitude." Yeah. And I always hung on to that and thought, "Well, you know, I'll I'll, I'll go into other things that I'm interested in, but I had this burning desire, and um, it never ever left me." So I decided to do drama for my A levels because I was quite good at it at school. I mean, I left school with ten GCSEs, I did quite well, but um. The drama was the way that I wanted to go. But because I had this burning desire, but with a down to where family saying, you know, do a proper job, I thought, well, I'd better train as something uh, like a teacher. So I went into the English uh, literature side of, of sort of studies and um, also photography. Um, but the, the, the acting kept pulling me. So uh, one afternoon I was in college and I noticed a, um, a, a thing up on the wall advertising some. Um, auditions for a film it was being made in the local area called Blood on the Dole and it was being produced by Alan Bleasdale yeah who, I remember um, him very yeah, famous yeah. back in the 80s and 90s um, he did Boys from the Black Stuff Yossi Hughes you know um, a great friend of mine Alan now yeah. and he um, they were looking for four um, young people under the age of 18 to play the lead in this in this film and um, 
I went up to the audition. Now, this was the days before X Factor, the days before any sort of social media talent shows. Um, and I decided to go along with a group of friends. I was about 17 years old to audition for Blood on the Doll. And uh, got there and there was about um, four, three, four hundred people all, all queued at this old building in Birkenhead. And I was really hungover. And um, I, I got to my turn. I waited about seven hours and it got to my turn. And the camera actually broke. And I thought, oh, but because of that, um, because I was one of the last few, they invited me back again. Really? So I went back the following week. Okay. And again, the days before X Factor, you know, it's like the first sort of touches of this X Factor style thing. And I kept getting recalled and recalled and recalled. And the 400 group got smaller and smaller and smaller until it was me and another girl down for the lead character in this film. Um, and I, I got it. I was, the, I was the lucky girl. Wow. So... Start by, by that must have kind of blown you away to be able to you know go through these auditions, get the part, uh, yeah. and off you went and delivered that part as well as you do, of course, because you are a fine actor. Thank so you. that must have then immediately at that point thought that's it, you know, I'm in the door. This is what I want to do. So were you were you then starting to get big roles in things, uh, building up to your uh, admission into the bill? Well, it, it sort of ignited the fire in me of this is what I want to do. There's no other job that I want to do. Yeah. Um, and being on set and just the whole feel of, you know, making a film. Uh, what an experience to have. I was, I was, I knew I was so lucky and I, and I knew I wanted more of it. So um, I, it, my luck grew uh, because the, the director of that then went on to direct um, a film by Ken Loach, who's yes. obviously an um, award-winning uh, director. Yes. Um, and the film was called Land and Freedom. It's quite a funny story, actually, because I was at college. Um, I'd finished doing Blood on the Doll, and I went back to college to sit my exams. And my tutor came in and said, your mum's just been on the phone. I was like, right. She said um, that Bill Roach had been ringing her. And I'm like, Bill Roach? Isn't that Ken Barlow off Coronation Street? <laughs> And my tutor's like, you know, has she got that wrong? Are you sure she doesn't mean Ken Loach? Because he was filming in Liverpool at that time. Right. Or was casting in Liverpool. Anyway, it was Ken Loach. Um, and it was the continuity um, person off, off the, the first film was working with Ken on, on uh, Land of Freedom and got hold of the director to get hold of me and it was this whole thing without an agent. So the next minute I'm, I'm in... Um, Ken Loach's Land and Freedom, which went on to win uh, Best International Film at the Cannes Film Festival. Wow. I didn't even know what the Cannes Film Festival was. Wow. So, yeah, if, that, if it was now, I'd be there, you know, I'd have my dress on, the makeup, <laughs> like living the dream. But I was, what, 18? I didn't have a clue. So but... after that, again, I got another job without an agent. I did an episode of Casualty. Um, and then Gordon and French, which are a very big agent in London, got hold of me. Um, and I never stopped working. You know, I had little downtimes in between where I'd go off and travel and have a yeah. bit of a party. Yeah. But I ended up doing um, a Peter Kosminski, um, I think it was a four-parter on, on BBC called Warriors. Um, and again, I was working with these amazing people like Ewan Griffiths, Matthew McFadden. Um, I worked with Stephen Walters, who's gone on to you know do amazing things, Hollywood films. Um, it's like all my leading men all go off and do like amazing <laughs> stuff. But, uh, you know, it, life is what it is, and, and, and I'm happy where I am. But um, I worked on Hetty Wainsworth Investigates with the amazing Patricia Routledge and Dominic Monaghan, again, another leading man who went off to do Hollywood. Um, it, se- it, then- se- it, seems, it seems to me that all the men that are in your life leave you. Um, so, 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 what, what, so what, what's going on? What's going on there? Then there's got to be a reason why all these men leave you. And I mean, so just, after that, yeah. I, when I came out of Hetty Wainsworth, um, I believe it was um, one of the producers of, of the bill had seen me and Hetty. Yes. And this is pretty much in those days how it used to go. You know, you'd be seen in something and you'd be asked to be in something else. Yeah. And it's all different these days. It's totally, totally different. And. Um, I, I got asked to, well, I didn't even audition for the bill, really. I, I got invited in uh, to speak on camera and to act with a couple of the regulars. And then they phoned my agent and said, yeah, we, we want Suzanne. But a, about, a, about a month before I got the bill, I was auditioning for Mamma Mia. It was the first show of Mamma Mia on the West End, because okay. nobody knows I'm a singer, you see. Okay. And um, I met Bjorn, Benny, auditioned, got down to the last five girls, I think it was. Wow. And I didn't get it because I'm not a dancer, I'm not a trained dancer, and it really let me down. I'm a great dancer, me, when, oh, I've, yeah. had, when I've had a bottle of whiskey, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, God, you want to see me throw shapes, but when it's so... choreographed, 
because, they yeah, yeah. But it's, I, I think I think we I think there's never been a stage show done yet. What we need is a stage show done with about twenty thirty people that have to be drunk before they deliver it. <laughs> no, that, tell you what, I'll be I'll be in there. Oh, that'd be that'd be worth fifty quid, wouldn't it, to go along there? Just say you got two hours to fill. All get plastered first and go on and do what you want. <laughs> Wouldn't that be that worth? Sounds good to me. That'd be worth. <laughs> so obviously, you know, the, the bill comes up, and by this time, we always remember the first episode being Wooden Top, uh, yeah. and of course, and then you know, and, and we're talking about Mark Wingett, of course, who was in the first one, uh, and of course, uh, Trudy Goodwin that was in the first one. Then, of course, I rolled out the bill. So yeah. you've come into a show that's already firmly established, of course, on the network, on the schedule. Turn up for your first day. You see people possibly that you've been watching on the TV yourself as a punter. How yeah. did it feel on the first morning to go into... I know that you're going to be PC Cass Rickman. And secondly, what was it like to be around these people uh, that you've been watching possibly only a couple of weeks before? Well, it just completely freaked me out. Like, my whole first day, I think I just was this wide-eyed, you know, child thinking, oh, my God. Um, because it was, it was just totally surreal. I grew up watching the bill. And, the, you know, the proper old bill. Yes. And um, so I walked in and, you know, I've got Red Hollis sat there, Jeff, who's now a great friend. Yes. Um, Graham Cole. And there were certain people I found it very hard to speak to. Um, like, I could do a scene with them. Um, but when it came to actually speaking to them as a person, I was just like, oh, like crumbling. Because I didn't know whether to ask for their autograph. And, well, and that would have been, like, Auntie Paul couldn't speak to him. Couldn't speak to Lisa Gagan, who plays Polly. Yeah. I was just in bits, absolutely in bits. But the worst thing was, my very first scene was with the two iconic, Polly Page and Colin Tarrant, who played, um, what was his character? Inspector Monroe. Monroe. Um, yeah. Inspector Monroe. And I was in bits. And I had to come across as this, like, cocky, you know, um, my reputation precedes me, you know, character. And I, inside, I was dying. I remember the episode well. I remember your introduction very well. Oh, yeah, so, I was so lucky I had a really good intro to that show. So, you kind of, you make your way into the bill, and then I noticed quite quite quickly they started to give you some heavy storylines. Yeah. Um, you, you featured in some, I mean, whether you realise that at the time when you were working through the scripts, uh, but some of the things that stand out to me, of course, is uh, the DS Beach corruption that was going on. Uh, yeah. The kind of start of that, the unfolding of, we, we all knew as punters that he was a bit bent, of course. Uh, you asked him for some help with you, and he helped you. Uh, and then in return, he wanted you to do him favours. So you were kind of doing a lot of stuff out on the beat, of course, with some great actors, like you said, Graham Cole being one of them, Polly Page. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, you did a lot of a lot of scenes with the CID team as well. You always seem to be one of these people that was picked all the time uh, to yeah. go and work along with CID. So you you probably, more so than other characters that, you know, we remember you had yeah. a lot of scenes going on all the time because the character was popular. And I found that with the bill. Correct me if I'm wrong. If the character was popular, kind of put out to the punters, the more they would give you screen time. Is that right or wrong? That is right, but then that was quite unfair sometimes on really popular characters. Like, I remember um, Rene Zagger, who played Nick Klein. Yes, Nick Klein, He yeah. started in the bill about um, three months after me. Me and Alex Walkinshaw started in the same week. Um, oh, Smithy, Smithy. Smithy, so he was yeah. on three days after yeah. me um, in film and schedule time. He was on screen a couple of weeks later. Yeah. Um, but we joined pretty much all at the same time. And I never, ever used to have days off. And I remember there was a period of about six weeks where Rene just wasn't in any scripts. And he used to be going mad because, you know, although you're getting paid and you're not working, it sounds great, but you're there to establish your character. You're there to, you know, run with it and to, to make this character believable and build this character yourself with help from the script writers, obviously. Of course. But, um, Rene was going mad. And it was only when, you know, he, he kicked off and then they started using Rene a lot. And, and, and gladly so, because he's an excellent actor um, and still out there doing major stuff. Um but yeah, I never had a break, never. Um, I, I was lucky to get a week off now and then. You know, they gave me, I think, 12 days off to go and climb Kilimanjaro, yeah. which I did with a couple of cast members. Yeah. And uh, we did that. We did a, a, a show for Channel 5 following us up the mountain, which was fantastic. Yeah. And um, I got back that day and was in, in work the next morning at 6am in makeup. And, you know, to come back from high altitude, we were like 20,000 feet were talking. Um, to come back down to, to, to solid ground. I was off my head on oxygen. I, just, <laughs> I was just like this happy face, but so tired. And, and I, I think I worked through like 20 days without a day off. It was just ridiculous. Well, so I, mean, schedules. I mean, Suzanne, what, what, you know, me being a fan of the bill, what, what worked for me is, and this is the way your character came across, 
You were always on the edge. Now, whereas the character of Billy Murray, who played Don Beach, was kind of way out there. You knew the guy was bent. You knew he was corrupt. Your character kind of, you wore your heart on your sleeve. There's one, there's one section of your time in the bill uh, where you uh, befriend a, a drug dealer, a real nasty piece of work, but you fancy him. And he oh, was that um, was that Leroy? Played Leroy, by Richard Mylan, yes. That who you're talking about? Leroy. Now, Leroy. Yeah. <laughs> I have to. I have to say, even though your character is a police officer, you seem to be, you you seem to as the character bend the metal as far as you could. You knew really you shouldn't be associating with this dude. However, yeah. Leroy, it became quite a big storyline um, where you know the end result was he found out who you were. Uh, but the love was so strong between you. And that's just one thing where, to me, that was kind of a heavy storyline for you, being involved with that. Oh, it was brilliant, you know. I loved... You used to get the script, and it was lovely to have something like that to sink your teeth in. And the things I got to do in those episodes, I I did a bank robbery, um, I was firing guns, (laughs) like all these things that, you know, not that you dream about doing, but you see on the telly. And suddenly here I am experiencing this, and it was just so brilliant. And, and every day, you know, I thank the Lord, if he's up there, that I got the opportunity to do these things. Like, that, those episodes were the, probably the ones that I think of the most, because I had the most to do, you know, getaway car driving, um, mixing with the gangsters. It was, it was just absolutely brilliant. It was so much fun. Well, see, I mean... You can you can square this up with me. Obviously, you're you're out on the on the streets, of course, and you're filming, and you're you're in police's uniforms. Yeah. Was it true that when you weren't filming, they had to be removed or covered up? Yeah, that's right. So, um, they would have to take your epaulets off. You know, the numbers on your shoulders. Yes. Uh, your tie would have to come off, and the hat would have to go away. I don't know what it's, whether it's like that on police shows now, but back in the day, because it's a long time ago, and it? it's nearly twenty years ago. This like yeah. people don't realise how long. No, 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 no. It, it was, was tonight. It was year tonight, old, Susan. I'm Forty-two now, but they wow. used to take the uniform off and lock it away overnight, like you, you were not allowed to have it. Um, I had Cass Rickman's passport, and it was a proper British passport, and I was like, "Can I have this?" You know, when I left, and they said. Um, absolutely not. You know they've got to be kept in, and uh, for, for legality reasons. Really. Um, my my warrant card. I wanted that. But you're not allowed. You're not just not allowed to take them. And um, but yeah. Um, I just think that like the whole experience of the bill was just something I'll never forget. And I know it was 20 years ago. And sometimes you bring up episodes and I say, oh god. Um, someone put on Twitter the other day a, a screenshot of an episode and said. Suzanne, can you remember which episode this was? And I was just like, eh, no. Well, I mean, I, mean, I think I, mean, I did about 150 episodes. Yeah, I think you did about 157 episodes in total. But, yeah, but, but, right, but okay. we, we, I mean, these, these we, we get people like that all the time. I'll put a screenshot up and say, uh, tell me, I mean, you, sometimes you don't know what you did yesterday. Uh, yeah. But but going going through the character, of course, you, you, you made Cass Rickman your own. You, you really did. Unique individual. So oh. everything's going along swimmingly. We don't want to talk about the end of your character yet. Okay. Um, they must have come to you then with an idea about bringing this reporter in, this Simon Kitson, um, and that you were going to now have a heavy storyline with this this guy, uh, where kind of, for those who, who, who don't remember this particular part, uh, this character came in that was involved with turning up at Sun Hill, reporting on murders and robbers and rapists and all this, and he kind of met you and became a little bit besotted with Cass Rickman, and on we go. And we were being taken down a road at that time that this guy was no good, very dodgy, she's in trouble, she's in danger. Um, obviously, you must have been told in advance where this storyline was going to go. So yeah. my question I'm asking you, did you want to leave the bill or was it the end of, did they tell you that it was your time up? Oh, absolutely not. I didn't want to leave. And I, I sort of disbelieve actors when they go, oh, yeah, you know, it's my time to move on and try other things. I wasn't. I would have happily sat there for years because I was with the best bunch of guys. I was earning a load of money. <laughs> I was doing a job that was the best job in the world. And, yeah, I, I, was, I was very happy. So I would have sat there and sat there, I've got to say, being honest, hand on heart. So I have to, a I, really well, good show as well. Well, well I, have to, I have to bring Ben Painton in on this because I know he's listening. I yeah. asked him the same question on Sunday last week. Um, that he was told that his character was was not going to be recontracted. He, he's, you know, he weren't going to be recontracted to the bill. Uh, and yeah. of course, we know his demise was the fire uh, that uh, was set by Des Taverner. How do you kind of, in your mind, Suzanne? How do you 
feel when you call it and say, well, this is storyline going to come up now? Um, but it's going to end in the demise of you by uh, the character Simon Kickson's sister, um, and that you're you're going to be killed off. How do you then approach the storyline and think, well, do I really put 100% into this now? Because these gits are getting rid of me. I mean, how do you put your head around that? No, I'm, I'm not that sort of person. You see, whatever job I do, I give me 100%. Okay. Um, if, I was, um, you know, if I was working in Asda on the tills, I'd be doing my hardest to be the best you know, till operative in Asda. So how if did I was you, working okay, as so a how, teacher, I'd be giving my 100%. How did, it doesn't matter to me. How did, how did you feel when you were told that you weren't going to be renewed? That's basically what I'm um, asking. To be, to be really honest with you, it was a Friday afternoon, and a lot of people have been told this. And you know, It was a Friday afternoon going to the exact producer. I thought, oh, here we go. So I, I sort of had an inkling anyway. Um... They, they, he did it very well. The exec producer did it very well. So he gave, he paid, <laughs> he paid me for an extra um, year, but I got killed off sort of within the uh, next three months. Right. So they paid me for a very long time after. Um, I think it was a year and a half actually. Okay. I, think I just had my uh, contract renewed. Okay. And when they told me, so all, so it was bittersweet. I knew I was all right for a while, and I thought, oh, I'll get work, you know, as you do. Yes. Um. So. It was yeah. It was a bittersweet moment because I thought, okay, my time's come to move on. I think with things like that, <clears throat> I I wasn't shocked. Um, I was upset because I would have stayed there. For, you know, I'd be there now if it was still running. Yes, I know. Um, but I just have to bite the bullet and, and go with it. And I did give my hundred percent. You know, I wasn't thinking. Oh, I knew I had to make this good because what I was doing then would mean whether I got work in the future. So if I made a massive impact, someone else might see me. I might go on to bigger and better things. So of course I gave hundred percent. Yeah. So what was it like filming the scene where you? Uh, <laughs> I'm not laughing at death, by the way. Um, <laughs> you were you were found by PC Nick Klein. Oh. No, no. Obviously, obviously, you were alive in that scene. You were there in that scene, and obviously, the the final scene at that stage was with uh, one of your your favourite actors, one of your mates. One of my best mates, yeah. How did it feel doing that scene? Um, it was horrible, and the reason being, I was um, well, I was in flesh coloured underwear wrapped in a, a, <laughs> a sheet of plastic, laying on the Thames um, estuary floor. Um, with a really bad wig on, because they, they had to make it look like I'd had all my hair cut off. Yes. Um, and I was sprayed blue to make me look like I was, like, dead. Right. Um, so it, I wasn't looking my best that morning, I've got to say. But, um, no, it was dreadful. It was terribly sad. And because uh, uh, René's such an excellent actor, I could feel him so upset. You know, he found me and he picked me up. It wasn't me, Cass. And, and he's like, no, no, and, you know, and it was just dreadfully sad. It was really sad. Maybe and maybe, maybe part of that is because he wasn't going to work with his mate again on screen? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And we'd, we'd had a big goodbye, we'd, you know, we'd had a party and all that. But I, I still talked to, well, most of the guys, actually, were all still in touch. I see Ben m- most more than anybody, but, um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm in touch with Rene, I'm in touch with other, other people. But, yeah, it was a very sad, a very sad time. So, obviously... You walk away from the bill, as, you, as you've already said. They were going to pay. They were paying you for a while after that. Yeah. Uh, so then you, you thought, I'm going to get some more work because like that's that's what you do as an actor. You you know you put yourself back out on the job market. Um, what happened after that? Because you you, you told me on a, on on a chat we had earlier uh, that you decided to do some charity stuff and and you know go and do a bit of climbing and different things. Um, yeah. Was that was that a regretful thing to do at that stage? Because at that time you'd have been hot property. At that time I, I was quite hot property, um, and unfortunately, if it was now, you know, you go on to these um, reality shows because reality has only just started. I think the very very episode first episode of Big Brother had, had just come on, yes. so this was the you know the, the groundbreaking reality show. And now look at it, and I think that's why drama's gone the way it is. It's it, it's mostly reality, but people in shows now to go into all these reality shows. So back in the day, if it was happening, then you would have seen me on Dancing in or Ice, you would have seen me on this programme, you know, maybe Bear Grylls on the island over there. Um, but it wasn't like that at the time. So um, I don't know, really, I, I came out of the show. What people don't really understand is that the bill, they film four episodes at any one time. So you could be working on four episodes. Yes. So sometimes the filming schedule was so off its head, it was just so busy that you'd literally be going from one unit, like orange unit, filming this episode where you're having a mental breakdown and everything's really terrible, 
to an episode where it's a party in the same day, you know, and, and you have to say to people, where are we in the script? It's such a mind-bending thing. And people don't realise, you know, four episodes at any one time is, is quite hard work for an actor. And also, um, EastEnders is, is very, hot, very tough to do, but it's filmed on multicam. So when you do a, a, a scene, there's many different cameras on you and, and you do the scene once or maybe twice. But with the bill, there's one camera. So they would do like one shot of the two of you talking, then a shot of him close up and then you close up and then a tight two. So it, you had to repeat, 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 repeat. And that's what made the job very hard. Um, it was the filming schedule was so, so chronic. So when I came out of the bill um, and I was still being paid, you know, that attitude of, well, I don't need work at the moment because I'm still being paid. So why don't we go here? Why don't I travel there? Uh, let's go and climb more mountains. Let's go to the Great Wall of China. Let's yeah. run the London Marathon. Let's do all these charity things that I did and was very lucky to do. Um, and, and also to give back a bit as well, you know, because I've raised loads of money for charity and that, that was a really good thing for me to do. Yes. But um, in hindsight, now 20 years later, um, I wasn't hot property anymore. As soon as the, the bill stopped paying me and I started, you know, actively looking for work again, yes. um, I wasn't quite so hot anymore. So the odd episode of Holby Casualty, you know, those sort of one-off things, uh, but nothing major. So um, I decided after a couple of years of trying to uh, do something else. So I actually became a personal trainer okay. for a while. Um, I had a six-pack, I was fit, um, and then the children came along. Yes. Um, so gone is the six-pack, gone is the fitness. Yes. <laughs> um, but I, I had to stop doing that because obviously it's um, mostly evenings, weekends. So um, I thought, well, what else can I do? And well, I, now, I can't really talk too much about this, but I work at the Bank of England now. Okay, I've been yeah. there for about six years. Okay. But that's all I can say about that because I'm not allowed to talk yeah, about that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, but, but, okay, you know, we, we talk about, um, you know, uh, it seems like you do a lot of things for charity. You like to get motivated and involved. Yeah. But at this stage in your life now, like you've just said, you're 42 years old, uh, mm -hmm. three years younger than me. Um, and of course, I'm not a celebrity, which I'm happy about. I, I, I just like I just don't get the whole. You get nice people, and then you get very strange people oh, yeah. uh, in the industry. Um, but I think um, that the fact that they're still showing your episodes now, the same as Ben, uh, the same as DCI Burnside, and all these people that are still on watch and uh, on different channels on satellite. I still think that you're, you know, a, a figure today that people will remember because Cass Whitman was very recognisable out there, yeah. of course, very good, strong character. Whereas there's other characters that you would think of. I mean, you know, we can talk about, uh, for example, PC uh, Eddie Santini, uh, yeah. Michael Higgs that went on to do EastEnders after that and different things. But at 42, do you want to get back into the acting bug? Have you still got the, the passion to do it, or have you kind of turned your back a bit, a little bit on the industry now? Oh, the passion's never left me. I've got to say, okay. um, it's really hard because um, the greatest role I've ever played is mum, and I'm mum to my two kids. Of course, and that is that is why I'm here. That's why I'm on this earth. It's to bring up my kids. So um, imagine me getting like a job in um, I don't know Yorkshire for five months. You know, how, how could I do that? I don't want to be apart from my family, my husband, yeah. and, and my dog. So I I choose not to do it at the moment. So I stopped having an agent about six years ago. Yeah. Uh, but I do still do voiceover work. Okay. Um, and it's always my accent. It's always Scouse that I do. I, I don't punt around with all different accents. You'll have to, you'll have to, Su 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 Suzanne, I, I Suzanne, you'll have to do me one. You'll have to, you'll have to show me your stuff. You'll have to do me a voiceover. That would well, I will good. do. What, all you have to do, if you go to um, Earache Voices, that's my agent in London, okay. and, and on there is, is all my stuff. You can tap it, you can listen to me doing various things that I've done in the past. Wow. Um, so I, I still do voiceover, actively still do that now. Okay. But I've noticed um, in the last couple of months, it's like the stars are realigning. I don't know. There's, there's like little messages being sent to me. Like, yeah. you should get back into acting. Yeah. You should get... And, I, and I'm listening to these little voices and I'm sort of batting them away still. Because until my kids are sort of old enough where I can go, oh, yeah, you know, they're, they're all right. You know, they're little at the moment and I just need them to be a little bit older. Yeah. And then may, maybe... But say, I'm, I mean, I'm saying maybe. I have actually booked in to have my uh, professional photographs done again. Okay. So this is by the lady who did them 24 years ago. 
Okay. Um, and she's like photography royalty, so I'm so happy she's agreed to do them this time as well. So I am, I suppose I am going to try to get back into acting, you heard her here first. But people think it's just, you know, suddenly you'll see me on the TV. I've got to get an agent yet. I've got to just take it all steady um, because I don't want to be in that predicament where I'm offered a, a, a play in wherever um, and I have to leave my family. I'm not ready for that yet. So I'm I'm talking, maybe put me up for a couple of adverts, you know, things that I can do in a day. Yes. We don't know. It's all out there. But my lit list is going to school next year and I think that's probably when I might pick this up and start really pushing it. But, but, but things the... are tapping me on the shoulder all the time, like your kind invitation to do this tonight and the bill reunions are popping up left, right and centre and then I've got Misty Moon asking me possibly to do some roles in one of the films they're doing and you know, just little things all the time. And I'm thinking, mmm, you know, maybe now is the time to put the feelers out. But surely, if somebody came along, seriously, if somebody came along with the right role, let's say, for instance, they came to you and said, you know, we've uh, we've come across you. Um, if you remember, do you remember Paul Nicholas, of course, who was in... Uh, of course, yeah, 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 of course, yeah. They, they ripped this guy off. He wasn't doing anything for a substantial amount of time. Then he appears in EastEnders. The, the late, great Michael Elphick, of course, after Boone, work dried up. He was yeah, doing he nothing. Yeah, I worked with him in the bill, yeah. Well, there you are. Then, then he appears in the bill, then EastEnders. Um, so I think it might be a second coming. But if somebody comes in with the right role, let's, say, let's just throw it in there. Let's say somebody comes in from EastEnders, say, look, we've got a character for you. We're going to run this for about three, four years. We're going to pay you X amount of money. Um, you might need to relocate to do this job. But were you telling me at this stage you'd turn that down or yeah, would you I could, would you because would. I I couldn't relocate my family. Um, absolutely not. That would be a, that would be a no. That's wonderful. <laughs> um, That's wonderful. No, you could. I could... really have to discuss that one. With you? No, I mean, <laughs> I, that, I, mean no, I mean, for that one. I mean, the reason um, I ask you that, Susan, I, is... I don't know. My initial inkling would be no because my son goes to such a lovely school and we're friends with all the mums and dads in the class. It's quite an unheard of thing. We've got like a really close relationship and we get on so well. And it's such a lovely school, and I really wouldn't want to take him out of there. Well, see, I, I, mean, I have I've a place to... up in Liverpool as well, and um, you know the, the family are always leaning on me. You're going to move back. You're going to move back. Now we've got this place, and we go back for holidays now and then. Yeah. But um, no, we, and the reason I think the reason we wouldn't relocate again is the school because we've we've just got this lovely little family going on there at the moment. Well, see... The Chris Phil- the Chris Phillips Friday Late Show. It's a new way to spend the night out whilst at home on Second City Radio. Right, one or two people I want you to say hello to on the show tonight. I want you to say hello to uh, Greg Pritchard. Hello, Greg Pritchard. I hope you're having a good time and listening to Second City Radio. And I'd like you to say hello to the lovely Maxine who's listening to you tonight. Hi, Maxine. Hope you're having a good night, lovely. And somebody, of course, is listening to you from the beautiful town of Barmouth in Wales. Uh, is Ruby Logan? Hiya, Ruby. Ruby Logan. Woo! She runs a beauty outlet. Beauty. Ooh, my sister has a beauty shop as well. Very hard work. Yeah, I mean, I keep trying to get her to beautify me, but she's not having any of it. I've only asked for a massage. It's all I want. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't get into the beauty side of things either, if you knew me. That's the good thing about radio, you see. I'm sat here with pyjamas. I haven't got a lick of makeup on. That's the good thing about being on the telly 20 years ago. I can still go to the supermarket now and... Um, I, you know, I don't really get recognised that much. Really, if a, a speaker do, I get more recognised by my me, me voice. Well, you're, you're, you're a and, bit... And no one recognises you, but on voiceovers and radio, you can just be yeah. like a... a well, you're, well, you're overdressed tonight. I'm sitting here with my boxer shorts on with a fan. Oh, family. lovely. Yeah, see? <laughs> it's, all, it's all rock and roll, peanut butter. I've told you I want to get on the TV. Whatever nice. it takes. Whatever it takes, I don't care. I, 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 I want to <laughs> no, do... No, don't be like that. Don't be like that. I'll... I think that's where television's going really yeah. nasty. Because yeah. the attitude is like that, and it really shouldn't be. Look, I'm not really like that. It's all tongue in cheek tonight. Cause I, I know. You know, I'm not like that. But but I should be because everybody else is doing it. You know that. It seems you to know, be, doesn't it? Yeah, everybody's doing it. Uh, I mean, I'm, there's people that I know that have got on the TV, been given huge amounts of money, blown it all within six months, and yeah. they're still dining out on the fine. Whereas you know, you were around quite a long time. Uh, can yeah. you say hello to Paul Rhodes? Um, hiya, Paul Rhodes. I hope you're having a good time, and I hope you're enjoying um, this this chat that we're having tonight. Yeah, they're loving it. Can you say hello to Diane Rhodes as well? Hiya, Diane. Are you related, you, you and Paul? Yeah, they're married. They're married. Aww. They're married. Right, can you say hello to Malcolm, who's listening to you with his wife Susie in Malaga tonight? 
Hi, I'm Malcolm and Susie in Malaga. Oh, my God. I hope the weather's really lovely for you. It's actually been nice here today, but I'm, I bet you're having a great time in Malaga. Well done, guys. They run a sports bar out there. Oh, lovely. Well, have one, have one for me, please. I'm having a nice cup of tea in my pyjamas. Forget, forget that. Send me some Rock free tickets. Friday. Nah, send me some free tickets on a plane and send Suzanne some. Forget your drink. <laughs> Just get us out there. We don't want to pay. <laughs> well, no, my my um, holidays now consist of um, husband, two children, a little bit of bingo, um, a little bingo. bit of like kitty disco in the evening, and then bed. I'm I, not rock and roll at all. I, I absolutely love bingo. I love I, I, I love bingo. And, of course, I, I said to uh, Suzanne this morning, I was having a lovely chat, uh, that all the guys are together next week for a weekend of fun. And one thing that I do is I record a music quiz, so I put loads of tracks together. I have to get the artist and the, the, the track. And, 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 and I'm, I'm into... Are you, kind of, are you kind of competitive like that, Suzanne? Yeah, I like a good quiz. Um, yeah, I, I probably am quite competitive. Uh, yeah, I am competitive, Yeah. <laughs> So I've noticed that even though you say you're 42 years of age, mm. you haven't aged. I've, oh, I've, I've I have. Oh, no, my God. No, you haven't. I you mean, haven't. my hair's not black anymore, but I've the lines on my face. Now I see the photographs you used for the um, publicity of this, and I was like, oh, my God, there's like no, not a line on my face. Has your husband got a sister? Yes. Right, have you checked her out? Because after your, you know, your stuff with Simon Kitson... Um, have you, have you, have you <laughs> no, absolutely not. I've checked her out. She's absolutely gorgeous. She's nothing like Simon Kitson's sister. So she wasn't walking into the bedroom and all that stuff at weird no, times no. when you met your oh, husband? No, no, no. that's good. Cause that, she, she's lovely. That, that they don't know, of course, if you go and Google it and type in Cash Rickman, Simon Kitson, uh, yeah. go, it, it, was, it was some scary times. But moving forward, of course, we've had a bit of a, bit of a chat. I've got a couple of emails that I want to read here, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, I want to say hello to Marie. Thank you, Marie. Now, Marie just wants to know um, if there was any character you could have worked with in the bill that you didn't because yeah. you were in at different times. Who would it have been? Oh, that's a brilliant question. Do you know who it would have been? Um, Caroline Pickles. Um, you probably know better than me of, of who she played. I can see her in it, but I can't remember her, her, her character. Name. Is this is this a new character? No, no, no. Caroline Pickles was in it years ago, um, and she's um, I can't remember her character name. She would have been in it back in the eighties. Okay. Um, oh, the so, uh, lady. So you, you, you've got Trudy, haven't you? You've also got um, oh. See, see, this is what happens when you're live. We will, anybody, yeah. anybody can Google yeah, me now. You have, have to Google it. I should know tell that. Tell me, tell me, blank. tell me. Give, um, give me the name. That's a really good me... question. Um, I met Caroline recently at the Bill reunion, and she's she's a cracker, that's and we got on really well. Um, and we, they showed old clips of the show, um, and I remembered it, and I was like, oh my god, you know, like I used to watch you. You were in my living room, you know, twice a week. Um, so I would say her. And I would also say the lovely Tosh Lyons as well, and know his daughter. Um, but he, I loved his character, and yeah, I would have, I would have loved to work with him. And especially being in with the old Bill lot and hearing the old stories, what they all used to get up to, and you know the, the crazy stories. I would have loved to have been there to be a part of. Right, all that can as I well. can I just thank Kathy? Thank you, Kathy, coming through on my direct message. Um, she played apparently. Let me just get this right. I want to make sure I'm right, so I don't offend anybody. Um, she was in the bill, and she played a, a DI or a DCI, is what I'm being yes, told. Yes, she did, yeah. Um, but that, that's great, but can we have uh, details as in who she was, please? Because we've got a bit of a mind melt going on here. So yeah, I have. I'll have, to, I'll have to have a little think. It'll come to me in a second. So, yeah, I mean, Tosh Lines, of course, played, played by the great Kevin Lloyd. Yeah. Uh, of course, he sadly passed away. And uh, I, know, I know Chris Allison was talking about that last week. Um he was a great character, but you know, back in the day, all these, all these were. I mean, I know you worked with uh, Di Deakin. Um, you worked with the great Russell Bolter on occasions, which was John yeah, Bolton. Yeah. Um, so that must that must have made you really happy, of course, to be around. I mean, I'm well, Joe. Uh, yes, I've got it come through. DCI Kim Reed. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Power, power of internet radio. Uh, thank you for that. DCI uh, Kim Reed, and she was in it for a couple of years. So what yes, I'm she hearing. Was, yeah. And uh, she's now she's now living in Wakefield, and she's sixty six. And she's a lovely lady, and she's doing very well. She's doing loads of movies, loads of films. She was in one of the Harry Potter films as well. Do you remember uh, Viv Martell? I do. Yes. Um, it was she played by Nula? Yes, she was. 
yeah, again, um, iconic, you know, her, her face. I, I would see her and go, oh, I knew exactly who she was. Um, she actually, Nula was um, currently, um, because the, the Bill Cast have been doing a podcast, um, which a guy called Oliver Crocker, he's a, a, a great guy, yeah. um, he runs the Bill podcast, and it's available on iTunes and SoundCloud, I think it is. Um, and Nula had her interview with him a couple of weeks ago and shot straight to the top of the chart, you know, of, of who's most listened to. And Oliver actually um, got hold of me tonight and said, hey, you're the top of the bill chart. Like, m- more people have listened to my one. And I'm like, yeah, not that I'm competitive or anything. <laughs> well, I was made up. So I, I, I nudged Nula off the spe- top spot. I was like, oh, so that really surprised me. Because I, I think people forget who I was. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can you say hello to Derek in Northumberland? Hiya, Derek in Northumberland. I hope you're well. Hi, Suzanne. Is it true that you really fancy Ben and you flirt with him on a regular occasion or do you really like him? Oh, I've been humbled, haven't I? No, um, Ben is... He's um, he's a good lad. And no, I don't fancy Ben. <laughs> I'm a very happily married woman. Sorry, Ben. Um, Sorry, mate. Uh, me and Ben are, are very good friends, and we we share good banter. That's all that I say. Um, is the is there anybody? I mean, look, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but is there anybody from the the Bill past uh, that you thought you would stay in touch with, but haven't? Um... Because weren't, weren't, weren't you weren't you in the Bill when um, when Garfield was in, for example? Yeah, I I worked with him. Um... You you Higginson. Hugh Higginson, yes. I've worked with Hugh on a couple of episodes because uh, I was sort of there when it was the whole love triangle w- with him and um, Quinn and, and Polly Page. Yes. Um, and it was the end of that sort of, you know, when, when Hugh left. So I was around then. So, yeah, I did work with Hugh. Yeah, he's probably one. I don't really keep in touch with Hugh. He lives in Australia now. Does he? Yeah, yeah I don't know. He, yeah, he's one of them. Uh, chap who played Deacon. I don't keep in touch with him. Oh, well, Scott. Um, uh, yeah, Scott. Um, oh, Scott, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't think of his surname. Scott. Yeah. Um, uh, Facebook is, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful, terrible thing, isn't it? It's, yeah. um, it's a great way of keeping in touch with people and seeing what they're all up to. And you know, so, so many of them are up to like amazing stuff. You've got like Scott Maslin, who's in EastEnders. Yes. Um, I know Walking Shores over in Holby. Um, Steve Hartley. Um, he, he, well, he, he does voice over glory. He's like the voice. Of I, think, I, I think. I think. I think. I think. I think Stephen Hartley. Doesn't get the credit he deserves. He was great. No, he, at, he was he, great he, as Chandler. He's a fantastic actor. And I remember him back as Matthew in EastEnders all that way back. Yeah, uh, years ago. Yeah. And he, I was he, really starstruck when I met Stephen because of that because I used to watch him in EastEnders then. And he does he's voice. Got, um, he does voice hours for Talk Sport. <laughs> yeah, everything. Uh, he's just the voice of Talk Sport. Yeah. I know Carl Collins is in a play at the moment in Nottingham. Yeah. Um, a lot of the guys have been to see him. I I can't get up there unfortunately, but everyone's raving about that. And um, you've got um, Steve Beckett, who I climbed Kilimanjaro with. He's yeah. now in Mamma Mia. Yeah. Um, so they're all they're all doing you know some. What really, about really what stuff. about what about the famous Eric Richards, Bob Cryer? Oh, do you know what? I, I love Eric. Um, we went to Dublin for his leave and do. The whole cast went, and that yeah. caused like a stir in in Dublin that weekend. I can tell you. Um, oh. But watching him, I always say he did um, his final speech. You probably know the episode where he leaves and we're all in the bar. Yes, uh, and Steve, his final Steve, speech, yeah, I'll tell you so you know I'm right. Stephen Hartley walks in, gives a, a speech, and he's not interested, and he gets up and yeah. speaks himself and says, You don't speak for me. He doesn't speak for the people here, and he, he has a kind of a last minute opportunity to speak to everybody. It was yeah. a wonderful scene, that one. Do you know that scene? He did that in one take. One take. Really? It was amazing and I was like proper choked you can see the caster you know they, they sort of pan round and everyone's choked that was real that was real he is an outstanding actor I'm really shocked I don't see more of Eric on TV I don't know whether he still acts or not I don't speak to Eric it's, it's one of those things with the bill if I needed to get hold of Eric tomorrow I could Yes. You know, we're, we're all we're all linked in and, and forever will be yeah and um, I meet when we do meet up together it's like we saw each other last week. It's not um, really you know, strange. 15, 20 years has passed. It, it's, we've seen you a week ago. It's really bizarre. So for the for the future, for you, what do you want? Um, <clears throat> Apart from the usual healthy children, lovely marriage, what else do you want now, Suzanne? Well, do you know what? I've led a very, very full life. I've done loads of the things that I set out to do. I've achieved some amazing things. 
through the, the luck that I've had in, in my life. Um, I've also had some terrible things. You know, I lost my mum when she was only um, 60. I was about 24 at the time. Yeah. So I've been through Perth. I've been through pain. I know, you know, it's not all been sunshine and, and flowers by any means. But um, I think I try to lead a good life, um, be positive, look to the future. I know we spent the whole of the last, what, hour or so looking back. So generally, you know, I do look to the future. And I think more of what I've got at the moment, I'm really happy now. And I've done things that I've always wanted to do. And I've been the places that I want to go. So now it's it's all about the kids, really. And although I'm trying to get into back into acting a little bit, um, I don't know whether I'll ever be the dizzy height of where I was when I was in my 20s. Um, don't know if I, w- I want to be recognised anymore. Yeah, like, but, 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 yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, you know, but, yeah, but, I like my privacy. Um, ideally, do you know what I'd love to do? Yeah. Voice over all the time. It's my perfect job. I'm good at it, and I I really enjoy it, and I then I can go out on the street and nobody gives a hoot about who I am, and I can walk around Tesco in my slippers and all that sort of thing. So, um, what do I want? I've got ideas for uh, for um, screen um, uh, uh, screenplays. You know, I want to write some stuff. Um, just to be able to be the mum, be mum, and put that to the side every now and then, and to um, express my inner creativity, I suppose, in See, whatever I think, way I think, it I think, I think as well, I mean, I know this to be tried and tested. People forget, if you go back to um, Wayne's World, do you remember Wayne's World? The film? Yeah. You remember that film? I do, yeah. Uh, in a basement. Yeah. I, I can't tell you which person I'm talking about, because I can't. Um, but there's somebody, of course, who's been on TV quite a lot, uh, not doing anything now, just just not doing anything. He now has one of the most successful television shows on the internet, mm. um, and he's made it happen himself. So right. to make himself more prominent and to put himself back out on the game and be able to kind of come out to his fans and people like that, he broadcasts a weekly show on the internet that's an hour long, and it's live. Right. And what he's done is he's converted... The garden shed. Yes, I know. Yeah, okay. But, you know, I, I like people that do this. Had it all soundproof, put a sofa in there. He has guests come round, people that he was connected with back in the day. And they bang it all out on, on live. And he's getting something in the region of eighty, ninety thousand 90,000 views per live show. Wow. Um, and now he's getting TV work from that. Because he's gone, do you know what? I can't be arsed waiting to you know, turn up at these, being told by 22-year-olds that I'm no good anymore and I can't actually, yeah. I'm too old. Yeah. He's gone, do you know what? I'll go and spend three, 400 quid. I'll set up a couple of boom cameras myself. I'll have some guests around. We'll have a live band in. Yeah. This, is, this is what I like about people that think outside the box and think, do you know what? I'm not going to wait for this. I'm going to start doing something myself. And I'm just saying to you, Suzanne, that, that's kind of an option. The digital world that we're in now, that can work for you. Do you know what? And, and it could because it's from home, and that's quite important to me. Home is home is me. You know, that's where I need to be. But at the same time, as well, it's it's expressing the other things that I'm good at because I am a singer. People yes. don't know it because I'm not the sort of person to jump up and be like rrr, rrr, everywhere I go. I don't do that. And when people say, "Oh, go on, do us a song," I'm like, "No," because I don't do that. It's cringe. But um, you know, I must be all right if I got down to the last couple for Mama Mia and all that. Yeah, it was a long you must time be. ago. But um, what I'm trying to do at the moment, there's a, there's a band in um, Essex, and it's a big band, and they're called the High Voltage Band, and they're very good. Um, and they play at, like, um, uh, Christmas dues, you know, um, in the high street and things yeah, like that. Yeah. this proper band. And um, I'm trying to get them to let me sing with them. <laughs> um, so I'd be happy to, as long as I'm just having a go at, like, you know, a little bit of creativity expression, I'd, I'd be happy with that. Um, I don't want to be um, in some Netflix, you know, production in America because I want to be with my kids, my husband, my dog. So um, of it's trying to the balance, and I don't think I would ever be up there again like that to that extreme. But um, it's trying to the balance where I'm happy and, I, and I'm choosing what I want to do, like re- like realistic. You know what I mean? Yeah, but but you you know, it's like what we said earlier on when we were talking about Michael Alfie and, and, and Paul Nicholas. Let's pick a couple of bands out for you. Remember, right, said Fred. Uh, people, I mean, Richard and Fred are, are good friends of mine, great band still. People think because they haven't had a hit record, uh, they're not in the charts anymore, they've kind of died off and gone. These guys are doing successful business everywhere. So it comes back to the point where you're saying, well, you know, you don't expect it to be as big as you were in the bill. I yeah. disagree with that because Paul Nicholas, Michael Elphick, we could pick we could pick a thousand names out of people that kind of died off for a while, went south, 
uh, heard nothing from her for a long time. It just takes that one person who comes yeah. in as a script writer or an executive producer go, I remember that Suzanne Maddock. I re- yeah, yeah, yeah. What's she doing now? Because there yeah. might be something, in, you know, in the back of somebody's mind that goes, we need to have a conversation with this person because I've just seen the character. So I don't buy what you say. I, I think, yeah, if your aspirations are that you go, I want to be as big as I was before. I want to be. It's not going to work. Yeah. But if you take the mentality you've got forward, then I think it might work for you. I hope so, you know. That's, I hope so. That's really nice of you to say that. Thank you. No, I think it is. Um, you know, just, you, um, if, if you if, said to me, OK, a perfect job for you, I would probably say I'd love to do, um, I'd love to play the mum in um, um, Blood Brothers on yeah. the West End. I'd yeah. love it. Yeah. Because um, I'm at that age now. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm castable now. Because when I was in my 20s and 30s, I was up against these models and... You know, uh, women who are absolutely stunningly beautiful who get all the roles. And now I'm 42. I'm a character. I'm not, you know, I'm 42. I'm not going after the, the young, you know, beautiful friend of this. You know, it's not like that anymore. I've, I've come to a castable age now. And all my mad days are behind me. And, you know, I know who I am a bit more. So I'm probably more castable now than I was in my 20s and 30s. Especially with the world changing so much now. And it's all, it's a little bit you know, superficial and it's about what you look like and all that. I just hope it sort of turns back to gritty dramas and I think it's starting to do that. There's some amazing TV out there at the moment. But I, I, I hope it turns that way and goes that way so that the people with more character get get a go as opposed to, you know, it being the beautiful people all the time. Well, listen, I've got, I've got to say to you, you know, uh, we've rattled on for an hour. And, um, Is that an hour already? An hour gone. Hey, well, you can't ask Gab. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you, but you know something, I always think if something's interesting, because we've had a bit of a talk, um, I, I'm, I'm one for letting it roll on. Um, but, you know, it's been it's been amazing talking to you because, like, you know, um, even my daughter, uh, my daughter is now 15. She knows who your character is because, unfortunately, oh. because she's with me, and I will always look for episodes of The Bill, not the new stuff, no disrespect to any of the characters or actors, uh, but I, I like to live back in the days of Tosh Lines, yourself, D.I. Deakin, yeah. uh, P.C. Quinn, and I always hunt for those episodes that I can find quite easily. Um, yeah. Even my daughter, who's 15 years old, um, knows who you are. Um, I said to her, I said, I've got Cass on the show earlier, uh, and we were watching an episode with you in. So, you know... People of an age that weren't even born uh, at that point are watching you, enjoying what you're doing still. And I think the more they repeat your stuff, the better it is, because somebody somewhere will be watching one of those and go, we need to, have, we need to bring this, this woman in. We need to have a conversation. So I think it's the start. All these things that you're feeling and all these stars aligning and these things that are kind of coming in to listen to them, because if you close the door on them, uh, I would think that would be a bad mistake. That, that's really sweet of you to say. I really appreciate that. Do you know what? That thinking of that, though, that does make me laugh before we finish up. Um, they'll see me on the bill 20 years ago, nearly, uh, with black hair. And, of course, they used to stand me on a box so I looked as tall as all of the chaps who were, like, six foot. Yeah. And I'd walk in the casting room. The, 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 the chap who sees me would go, yeah, let's bring her in. I'd walk in, five foot one, <laughs> blonde hair, 20 years old, they're all live. They'd be like, oh, who's this? <laughs> so, yeah. But I know what you're saying, and that's really nice, and, and hopefully that's true. Well, listen, if, if as, I, as I said to you off the air, if I can be any assistance to you at all, um, then, you know, by all means, like I said to Ben, if you want to come on and promote something or you've got a charity coming up or, or you need a bit of help and support with that, uh, you're welcome on the station any time. You know, we're not as big as the main ones, but we'd like to think we carry, you know, our own little package here. Um, and, of course, just give people your Twitter address if they want to follow you. Yeah, I think it's Suzanne Zero Maddock on Twitter. Um, I'm only I'm only new to Twitter. I only started tweeting about um, two months ago, so I'm very new to Twitter. My Twitter following is is, is climbing, which is really nice. Um, I do actually keep Facebook just for my friends, so don't bother trying to get hold of me on Facebook because I'll just ignore you because that's private and personal. Well, hang on, 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 I'm tweeting regularly. Hang on, just a minute. Let me just cancel my friend request. Hang on. <laughs> Oh, Chris! <laughs> I've got to, I've got to keep it private. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just cancelling. Hang on, hang on, hang on, cancel. Uh, what's these? Th- oh, that's sweet. What's these three yeah. dots? Yeah. Twitter, I'm there. You know, yeah. get, get hold of me on Twitter, absolutely, and I'll, I'll follow you back as well. Yeah. So, can I just say to all the celebrities that follow me on Facebook, don't follow me no more. I'm keeping it <laughs> private. So, get your ass off. I ain't talking to you. Get off. <laughs> 
go before you get blocked, because I'm going to take a leaf out of Suzanne's book. I'm only keeping private people on there. So, uh, Sam Kane, you can go. That's for starters. You can you can head off there. Chris Allison, you can go as well. <laughs> you can all go. Uh, it's been wonderful, Suzanne. It's been great. Um, it's Thank been you, really it's been enjoyable. Really nice to talk. Thank you. Um, and uh, if you could just stay on the phone for me, I'll have a quick word with you off the air. Absolutely. Uh, a big virtual round of applause across the United Kingdom. Uh, for the wonderful uh, Suzanne Maddock. Yay! <laughs> should, we, should, we just, should, we, should we close it with your theme again? Let's yeah, cl- why not? Yeah. I love hearing that music. Yeah, so don't go anywhere. Oh, I, haven't, thank you. I haven't gone. Bless you, Suzanne. The Chris, Fe- the Chris Phillips Friday Late Show. It's a new way to spend the night out whilst at home on Second City Radio.